Is it really on? <laughs> yeah. Guess what today is? Today is crazy day. <clears throat> it's going to be crazy because I needed a little bit of moral support. I got me some of that sad, gloom, doom news, and so I had to call the crazy man and crazy. Say, say, you got any sardines or pork and beans you can bring and take me to lunch? Okay, you've blowed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She can get the possum and the squirrel. <laughs> Hey, you know what you've got in the freezer? Fish. I do. We could bring that fish here to this studio and we could cook it up right here. And then we'd be in so much trouble because the studio would smell like fish. Do y'all uh, know what it takes to get rid of that smell? Yeah, I do. Yucko. I already tried that. Yucko. Yeah, it doesn't smell good. I we tried to cook it at my house. Mm -hmm. Didn't go good. At all. At all. At all. At all. Well, can you tell folks a little bit about a coat drive we're working on for the veterans of Cherokee County? You beg better than I do. Yeah, I'm used to it. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're doing a thing for coat to gather coats for people who don't have one and they're cold this winter. Homeless veterans. Yes, oh, veterans, yeah, even better. And uh, As we approach Veterans Day. Yeah, and uh, we could... Uh, Take your coats, give us a call, give me a call, 706-273-1957. And uh, we're gathering up coats and we're going to put them where they need to be. If you're not using them, you know, right. why and not? I'm going to give some. I guarantee you there's not a soul watching us today who can't walk to a closet and say, I haven't worn that coat in five years. I haven't worn that coat in seven years. I've got too many coats and I don't have enough closet space. If everybody gives us one coat, if y'all will pick up the phone, one coat per person, would that not be amazing? I know. That would be so cool. Now, Miss Margie's yeah. going to give us some coats. She's got some. Coats. Yeah, that's plural. Plural. Plural, coats. yes. Yes, yes. Uh, she's got some, and another friend of mine's got some, and uh, I do too, but i got to get them, you know, he we won't, we won't go up. into the details, but I'm in a jam. <laughs> created havoc at his oh, old, old homestead. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the old homestead, thank you for the water, but I, I got home last night and had me another empty jug. Do you know why? Because the back of my car was full of coats for veterans, and there was one of my water jugs under the coats for Covered veterans. Up. I thought you yeah. were going to say you had an empty jug because one of them had leaked out in <laughs> no, your car. No, 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 no. But I did. I, I had a whole bunch of coats in there, and uh, we're gathering up coats yesterday. We spent our day gathering up coats, and and we even got some new sweaters with tags on them. You know, a sweater will keep you warm on a fall day, and a coat will keep you warm on a winter day. So, yeah. you know, when we think about veterans, um, as we approach Veterans Day, if you have coats that are even hanging in your closet that are, you know, y you get that smell of the closet or whatever and stuff you don't wear, I'll wash and dry them. I mean, I don't care. Just, just tell me you've got some coats that we can help these veterans with because they went to war in their starched, pressed uniform so we could live the life we are afforded today in America. Many of them came home after seeing horrible, horrible things. Did your daddy ever talk about what he saw at war? Not much. Yeah. He wouldn't say much about it. Most uh, of them don't. Just yeah. a little, you know, a little tale here and there, a little something, you know, mm -hmm. nothing, none of the gory stuff. Right. And many of them end up with issues because they can't, they can't forget it, but they can't talk about it. I know. That's strange, but, you, yeah. but it happens. And so we have a lot of homeless vets in America today. And Cherokee County, Georgia happens to have one of the largest populations of homeless vets. And I am begging y'all. I wanted to reach a record number of coats. Y'all are going to have to go to your closets to help me do this because I've got a bunch, but I wanted a bigger bunch. So you get my drift. Y'all know when, I kind of When is the deadline? Tuesday. 
Yeah, I got to get moving. I, I got coats. I got coats. Oh, so, y'all, everybody who's watching today, yeah. if you seriously, during a commercial break, if you will get up and go to the closet and say, why wow, Henry hadn't wore that coat in 11 years and give it to us. There you go. Yep. Does that make sense? I like it. It's a good I like idea. It. We don't, the, the veterans, here's my little saying. I may have gotten this somewhere, I don't know, but I could just say I made it up. Yeah. Yeah, you could. But being serious, we don't know them all, but we owe them all. Yes, yes. Folks, let's be good to them. Yes, absolutely. Because they they're the reason why we're sitting here. Absolutely. And why we can do what we do. Now, the other thing I want to remind you is to get your flag out and fly your flag. If you watch this show often, you know I never go to work without these flags behind me. <clears throat> I never go to work without the authority to exercise my right to free speech, to carry a gun, to do the things that I do because your daddy and a whole lot of daddies like him went to war so we could maintain the lifestyle that we have. And um, sometimes we forget them and that's not good. We shouldn't forget them. We should never forget. Never, ever forget. Have you forgot any words to songs lately? All the time. He's funny, y'all. He's getting a little teeny bit of age on him, and I get really tickled because every time he does something, it's perfect, and then he says, I believe I'll change that, and I'm yeah. going, oh, no, it's the old age <laughs> kicking in again. <laughs> you know? I've that. always been like that. <laughs> he oh, and settle. you thought I messed the words up on... I did, I, but I was listening to it 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning trying to figure out how to use it yeah. for a little spiel. Use out of focus. I was not focusing, yeah. and you corrected me real quickly. Yes. Yeah, it said, what do you think it said? Um, dreams. I Why think would it, I do that? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't Being know. the songwriter that I am. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I had to say that myself. I was waiting on you, yeah. but you never yeah. did say it. <laughs> I never did say it. Being the really good songwriter that he is, you know, uh, uh, two years what ago, was I it? never it heard was, a song. It was uh, uh, Welcome was, Home. To all your dreams, mm -hmm. hot rod forge and mountain streams. Right. How did you get that sideways? I thought he had repeated <laughs> dreams, but I was wrong. And and I will admit when I'm wrong, I was yeah, well. wrong. I got to remind y'all of something that I can't be at because I'm going to be at Jen's service. Y'all knew and loved Jen. She was with me for many years as a co-host often as my guardian often, anytime we went out and did public events, she ran the drawing, she ran the giveaway, she did everything she could to encourage me to keep doing what I was doing. She organized a lot of the parades we did and she loved being out there meeting and spending time with y'all. We are saying our goodbyes to her Saturday at two o'clock at Epworth at the First Baptist Church. So um, Dr. Tom will be preaching and I don't know who else, but I can guarantee you we need to show up and say thank you to somebody who made television easier for me and fun and sometimes crazy. So, um, and we're gonna show you a little, a little blip it in just a little bit because the guys have put together something. But this means I won't get to attend the 37th annual White Christmas Concert it is with the Isaacs, the Isaacs, bigger and better than him, the Isaacs. Thank and, you. And Gloria Bound <laughs> and John R. Brumman. But they have all those awards, you know. Yeah. They have all those awards. So you know we, how many awards have I have? Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh-oh. How many? Big old goose egg. <laughs> Uh-oh. You well, know how many awards I deserve? A lot. Big old no, goose. No. You deserve for supporting yeah. the Shriners and supporting uh, special no. needs. Oh, wait. I, I have awards. You do? I should not have said that. What did you win? From the Shriners. From I, the Shriners. I got all kinds of there stuff. There you go. Wait. There you go. Well, look at me. But Saturday, which is Veterans Day, beginning. Not the Shriners. The, the Lions. The Lions Club. The Lions yeah, Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At 4 p.m., Glory Bound Ministries is going to have a huge concert, 800 people seat right there. Five Stones Church at 1358 Sixes Road in Canton, Georgia. Please come. Please be a part of. If you're a business and you have a pen in your hand today and you can write a check to the White Christmas, it is a 5013C, it's, it's tax deductible, you get to save money, you get to write it off. Would you rather give it to kids for Christmas for kids in foster care 
or send it to the government. Think about what I just said, y'all. Do you want to send it to the government and trust oh, them with your money? Oh, I could money? just say so much. Right I know now. he will. Yeah. I'm opening the door for him. Oh, but I'll be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. government. The government. We're going to send them lots of money to blow up a hog's honey. So there you yeah. go. There you go. Yeah. But truly, this is the 37th year foster kids have done nothing themselves. This is because they're in bad situations, and this is going to provide Christmas for 700 children. So please be a part of this. And if you know Bob and Linda Reese, you know how hard they've worked for this. And if you know the Isaacs, you know that they are going to give of their time. Their concert usually books for about $10,000. They are giving of their time. So there you go. All right. You've made some progress with some songs, and you have accomplished some things, and you have some mastering that you've sent here that we're going to be allowed to use. Yes, I do, and uh, thank y'all for using it, too. Uh, the Mountain Life is mastered and ready to go. Pumpkin Center and uh, the Hank Williams Tribute is in Nashville, Tennessee, as we speak. Right. Being, I reckon they call it manufactured. Mm -hmm. The graphics and the CD is being printed, everything. So for y'all who are calling wanting to know when I'm going to be riding around with a car full of them, it won't be long. You reckon by maybe December 10th? I believe so. I mean, you know, it's hard to uh, say what they, they can or cannot do, but they're, they're very cooperative. You know, if I tell them I need it by a certain date, they'll, they'll usually push for that date. And very few times has it failed. So, yeah, you, you can have it. Hopefully. By, by December Christmas. 10th, yeah, 15th, maybe something. Don't have to shop big. You can just shop local right here, yeah. right here, and you can hand me the money and I'll hand it to him. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's going to be cool. going to be cool. I got somebody with me helping me on the graphics. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be pretty cut and dry because, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to misunderstand what I'm trying to talk about when I send that in. So sometimes we have to go back and forth with some proofs. But this time I think it's going to be, like I say, cut and dry. And they can uh, probably put it together pretty fast. Good. Good. Now, we had a message from um, the Kiwanis up in Copper Hill. They want to know, are we going to do the parade? It all depends. It depends. Oh, yeah. You, you got your... Surgery. Procedure. I've yeah. got some surgery coming up again. I got a biopsy when is it? back. I don't know. I'm waiting on the surgeon. I have one surgeon that I'm going to trust. It's on my face. And as you get old, your face gets old too, but he's got to take out some cancer on my face. I don't like that, but I trust this doctor. He did something that we're going to show y'all in a little bit, and it was a tiny little spot, and he did a big place, but y'all don't even know it was there, and he did a great, great job. So this one, the last time I had surgery for cancer on my face, I came on the air and I had bandages, and I had calls from six of y'all made appointments that, or nine of y'all made appointments, and six of you came out with some sort of cancer. Now that was mind blowing to me and I'm so glad that I had either the stupidity or the dignity to come and wear a bandage on the air because I said how important is skin cancer. You are fair complected. Do you ever get those checkups? Yep. And I have see they ever my dermatologist found? every year. They ever found anything? Nope. Well, uh, one guy said we found something, but I don't even think so. I think he had a payment on his Mercedes. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't think there was. <laughs> uh-oh, uh -oh. Yeah. Well, this. So I switched dermatologists about that time, <laughs> yeah, but nothing yeah. since then, yeah. Yeah. You I... know if they do surgery, they get a lot of money. Yeah. They call it surgery. If they cut any little thing off, <laughs> call it's it called surgery. surgery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then your insurance will. Yeah, kick yeah. in. Well, Moe's surgery is very different, and it was funny because when they did that last time, it was a little bit dot, and they cut something the size of a quarter, and then they close it with about 14 stitches. Well, I, I don't know how they're going to do this on the spot that we have today, but they're going to work on it. He's a great surgeon. His name is Dr. Friedman. He is at Kennestone Hospital. I trust him completely, but no, I will not do the Kiwanis Parade with a big bandage on my face. Where's, where's so. that? Kennestone. No, the 
the parade in Copper Hill. Oh, yeah. It's so we're not we did doing last it? Year. Yeah, I hope we will. I'm going to try to schedule the surgery around. Oh, okay, it. yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to. I well, let me tell you this, Copper Hill. Last year we brought the 50 GMC. You'll yeah. be hearing a song about that real soon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but this year we're bringing Candy Cane. She's pretty. You'll like her. She is pretty. <laughs> and she looks like Christmas. She does look like she Christmas. She looks like yeah. Christmas. She's looks perfect like a big for the old Christmas parade. Peppermint yeah. Stick of peppermint candy. So to our friends up in McKaysville and Copper Hill, yes, we're going to try our very best to be there. I'd like to schedule the surgery right after the parades. So that way I don't yeah. have to run around with that bandage on my face. So, so it's yeah. going to be okay. But candy has new shoes. Good ones. And everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does Candy have a heater in her? Candy has a heater. Okay. Well, some old cars don't. I didn't know. Okay. He looked at me like I'm t <laughs> duh. <laughs> some has old a, cars don't have a squirrel got a climbing I've gear? Dri I've driven a few old cars that didn't have a heater in them. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I've lived in a few houses that didn't have a heater. But I'm not admitting heat. it. I'll just go with it. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we hope that we will have the tribute for Jen. We have to laugh, we have to love, we have to live, and we have to move on. We lose those that we love, and we remember them, and we think about them. And this weekend, I think it's very appropriate that her service is going to be on Veterans Day because she gave a lot of herself and a lot of time, a lot of energy to the USO. The USO greets 10,000 military every day that they come through the Atlanta airport. When you think about that, they offer them food and snacks, and a place to rest. And if you're making donations for the end of your year, please consider the USO. And if you would like to make an, uh, a donation in honor or in memory of Jen, that would be awesome. Again, her service is gonna be at two o'clock this Saturday at Epworth. And we're gonna take a commercial break. We'll be back shortly. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> I'm grown up, grown up, is there in every way, care and take care of you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. Whether you're swimming in the sea, or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge.
girls, this cookbook, we have a deadline, and I really wanted to have it on the market by November 20th. By the time Thanksgiving comes and it's time to shop for Christmas, do you think we can do it? I think, I think okay, we're okay. determined women. I yeah. think we can do pretty yeah. much what we put our mind to. Speaking of determined women, you became a widow at a young age. Yes, I did. Um, you and your husband worked in Washington, D.C.? We were both in Washington, D.C. He uh, became ill with cancer and died five months almost to the day of his diagnosis. Mm -hmm. He was 48. Right. I was 42. Very young widow. I became a widow at 50. Um, it's tough. It is tough. But still magno magnolias. Yes, well, we you don't have an option. You, That's you right. carry on. You, do. you just, I listened to you the other day talk about how it affected you, mm -hmm. and I knew exactly what you were saying. You're in, your world ends, but I you keep going. I did not make smart choices, though. I, I think it took me two years to get smart because I just couldn't handle it, and I now learn to handle everything. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that. It's very important. You were talking about music. Can I say one thing right quick? You were talking about music, gospel music. We all we all love gospel music. Mm -hmm. Sometimes phenomenal. Sometimes you don't know what a song or a verse in a song. Sometimes it helps somebody through something oh, when yeah. nothing else will. Right. You know. Right. So. And and you know the other night I went to see Karen Peck and New River. I'd never seen them live. Mm -hmm. And when she stepped on stage and they had the footage with Jesus on the cross Absolutely. and she sang, what is that song? Four days late. Four days late. Yeah. Thought I'd die. Well, that was. It the, was I, I'm getting cold chills now. With but the, that song. With the slides that they were showing, it, it was, was you were just, you were literally standing there in the village with them when mm -hmm. it happened. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was just a phenomenal night for me. It was the first time I had gone out in the widow wagon. She'd never been in the widow wagon. Well, I'd been in the widow wagon, <laughs> but I'd not been on one of those trips. <laughs> But to listen to that music, mm -hmm. but when the Mark Trammell Trio, when he stopped and sang How Great Thou Art, mm -hmm. you talk about a song that's taken me through a lot of oh, tough yeah. times. Yeah. That was, that's the song that speaks yeah. the, the most to me. Right. And literally, my heart just lifted with that. It was like he was singing that directly right. to me. Right. And what that did for me and my friendship with you, I thought mm -hmm. about that though. Because mm -hmm. you, you've made me being up here and being away from a lot of friends for a long time. We became family quickly. In a very big hurry. Mm -hmm. And you've become very, very, very important in, in my family's lives. And I enjoy being with you and I love you dearly. And, and I, we have I a ball. respect you and I laugh and, and you know, I cry. The one thing about her, we're almost too much alike. We're really and a lot And sometimes I think one day we may <laughs> lock horns, but I totally respect her, and that's very important. Good morning. Hi, Good everybody. Morning. Happy morning. Guess what? It's almost Christmas. Guess what I've done to prepare for it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, it'll happen anyway. It's going to happen. You can't stop Christmas from coming. Jen and I are going to make something that I have made. I I don't even want to admit how many years we've been doing this. Well, I've known you for 19, so we've well, been eating them before then. So. Mama started it. Oh, am I going to say these words? 65 years ago. But this is what As a little bitty girl, my mama started this foolishness. Yes. Now, you're and wearing your USO open apron because... We're in the process right now. We go 24 hours. We went yesterday, and then today is a full 24-hour round from now until Sunday morning. Wow. We have more than 10,000 troops that will be coming through the Atlanta airport, and we've worked very diligently to make over 10,000 goodie bags to give them all. And it has to be hard Amazing. stuff like crackers. It can't <laughs> be, it, you can't, we can't do the little Debbies and the pound cakes <laughs> and stuff that we do because they just crush in a goodie bag. <laughs> but we have people, and they're, we're working in a, in a security area of the airport we have one group that in fact our church on Saturday will be the only ones running and manning the USO club upstairs mm -hmm. we'll have some that are downstairs where they're going from charter to charter but the storm that's in the Mideast now that's coming this way for oh, us today yes. they were originally <laughs> yes. not going to start coming in until Friday mm -hmm. late Friday and mm -hmm. go Friday to Sunday night the storm moved everything around so they've really been creating a problem so we're going with hundreds of sandwiches for Saturday and we're just we're going to be there we've made the commitment it's God's work that's and awesome and yep. like Nick and I were talking a while ago they are children mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. children protecting you and me right and right. you've been you've seen them 
like to gut wrenching. Yeah, gut, yeah, it, gut wrenching. Because they say don't cry while you're there. Well, it's very hard to see these young, 18, 19 year old kids that you know are going to war. It's it's very hard. So yeah, but say a prayer and think about us down there. We will be there. Right. And we're just. <clears throat> they know that we won't be at church on Sunday morning, but we'll be doing God's work with mm -hmm. Epworth First mm -hmm. Baptist Church. And thank you, everyone, who has bought crap. Bought. We we took down hundreds of packs of crackers to go in the box in That's the baggies. Awesome. And a couple of their really big corporate sponsors have had staff there helping stuff bags and do things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's been a real help, the things that the, the Atlanta corporate sponsors have done. I won't That's mention great. all of the names, but they are just, they, they have been phenomenal. Hear that. Okay, guys, we're going to have to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet only on ETC. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye, everybody. Merry Christmas. Well, you know what? She was fun. She was crazy. She was sensible. She was sensitive. She was sassy. And um, she's gone to be with the Lord. And uh, I guarantee you she's telling him how we're going to run things because she was an organizer. Where, she was an where, organizer when, extraordinaire. When did she pass? A uh, few weeks ago. Oh. Yeah, a few weeks ago. But it's a celebration of life. Yeah. It's a celebration of life. So that will be on Saturday, and I, I want y'all to all remember her and pray for her daughter Michelle, and um, and and let's get through this. It's uh, it's going to be weird, <clears throat> but you know she battled cancer for three years. Can we just all say we hate cancer? We hate what cancer does to people, but cancer is real. So yeah, early detection very very important. I'm very fortunate to have good doctors who keep detecting it. Darn it! <laughs> Darn it! I'm tired of being I'm tired of being the sticking sticking pin, but I am. Okay, we want to share something with y'all that we did recently in Ball Ground, and um, Ball Ground is growing, and it is going to be really, really cool. It is becoming a very, very walking community. Every morning at six o'clock, you'd love this because people walk everywhere. You love to walk. People walk everywhere. They walk their dogs, they walk their, you know, kids, take the strollers out. It is a walking community, and I think the mayor is getting what he wanted. He wanted Ball Ground to be a walking community. It's taken us a while to get there, but we're getting there. Here's a little bit of footage of one of the reasons Ball Ground is becoming a walking community. This is what we did on the groundbreaking. This is what we're building. There's my house right over there. We're on air. Mm -mm. He said we were. We're back. We're back. Okay, that's a little bit about what's going on in Ball Ground. If you are looking for a place to rent, we have a, a rental coming available in Ball Ground after the 17th of November. A gentleman's buying that as an investment property, and we're going to be renting that out. There's something going on in Ball Ground all the time, but the most important thing this year is December the 1st, the 50th anniversary of the Ball Ground Christmas Parade. It is the best parade ever. It is huge, it is big, and it is a big, big to do this year because we are honoring Santa and Mrs. Claus. He battled cancer this year and everybody was worried to death and he's doing good and he's gonna be on his float, on his sleigh. It's not a float, it's a sleigh. It's a sleigh. It's a sleigh, there's a difference. Is that the one we went to last year mm -hmm. and Candy, Candy showed out? Candy showed out. <laughs> Candy did show out, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she was the prettiest thing there, and she had to Showed show out. herself. Yes, yeah. yes. And you were getting a little antsy with her, weren't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think we got all those problems corrected now. Folks, seriously, with old cars, yeah. anybody that has one, you will agree. You just don't know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. But usually it's okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I've corrected those problems, I hope. And sometimes it hadn't been any problems since then. Uh, yeah. But I guess if there was going to be one, it'll be in a parade <laughs> it'll every be in time. It'll be in a parade every time. Yeah. Every time. We love candy anyway. 
She's beautiful, and she is the Christmas card. Now, yeah. we have something we're going to share because about a year ago, we did a little blip it with baby Zanna, who was a tiny baby. Do you remember that program? I when do. She had the turkey on her butt. I do. And you wanted, uh, what did you have? Chicken with that sauce. You made that chicken bait. stuff. Yes, and you loved it. <laughs> you loved it. It was good. <clears throat> it was salad, and I, I, I got them. This is crazy. I've been eating all these healthy greens. I'll probably die soon because I've been eating so many greens. It says superfood. Now, does that mean you're a superman because you eat really, really healthy? Do you feel better because you eat healthy? I'm not sure. You don't eat a bunch of sweets. You don't eat a bunch of bread. I know. You walk four miles a day. Then there's that other theory. What? Get the ice cream because you may die tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know which way to go. It's just like, do you lock your door at night to keep uh, intruders out? Or do you leave it unlocked so the ambulance can get in and get you? I don't know. Answer <laughs> don't that know. for me. I don't know. Speaking of ambulances and speaking of small towns, Jasper Election pulled that off. I think all the incumbents went back in. Uh, have y'all got results here yet? I, I'm sure. Well, I don't know. I don't. I think there's a toss up about the mayor's race. Okay. I don't know. Did kind of everybody go back in, or what's we don't know yet? Uh, well, some you know didn't even run, rerun. Okay. Uh, I don't. Uh, I just can't answer you. I'm sorry, but the, I know that uh, some of the ones that have been there a long time, or one or two of them, did go back in. Mm -hmm. And there's some new faces too, and I don't even can't even think of who they are. I don't think Jasper. I don't think any of the new folks went in. But I think that we did do we did do some uh, people got out, people politicked, people spent yeah. some money on advertising. The newspapers love the election time, don't they? Because uh -huh. that's when you spend money at the newspaper. Yeah, you yeah. go out and you take out the and, and the printing ads. the printing companies. <laughs> yeah, they love you. They, they love like you. it. Yeah. So um, it is so important to vote in every election, from your tiniest elections to your biggest elections. Exercise your right to vote. If you're not registered, register now so you can vote in next year's elections because and since, it is uh, your right. Since hot dogs are eight dollars, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. you better believe everything else is sky high too. Mm -hmm. When I called about my CDs the other day, they're way more expensive than they were. Oh no! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Does that mean people are going to have to get a second job to hear your music? I'm going to leave the price the same, but okay. But boy, they went way up that on means their. you won't even break even. Their cost up there. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's all right. I, I just my. thank you for listening. It, uh, yeah, so. yeah. Oh, no, I mean, I, no I, I make a little off of them. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. not like I did or would have. 29 cents. <laughs> yeah. Used to, if you yeah. got so many, you know, it'd be like so much per copy. It ain't like that no more. <laughs> no, nothing is. Nothing and hot dogs is. are $8, let me remind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to take you back to a heart of the home. And uh, this is just a reminder of how fast time goes. We known each other about six months when we did this and it is the one night that you absolutely blew my mind and I thought we're not going to be able to get through this program and I'll explain that. I don't know we what you're talking about. What, what skit are we to? What is this? <laughs> in the kitchen. At, at, in the, the kitchen. at your brick house? At the brick house. Here we go. This I'm just is, trying to see which face looks better is, on TV. Listen, this is what happened that <laughs> night, y'all. It was crazy. He just said, oh, I can't cook. I can't cook. I, I said, you're oh, not supposed that. to cook. Oh, that. You had me up in the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> he blew my mind, and I told Tim, I said, oh, my God. I said, I've had preachers, gospel singers. I've had everybody in the world sitting here cooking, and everybody just cooked. Uh, and he said, I, I can't cook. Uh, no. <laughs> You, I remember so the episode now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was hysterical. Another one of your curveballs. It was hysterical. Yeah. So we just, we laughed, and, and I said, oh, my gosh. I said, you're not going to be the cook. You're going to be the assistant. We're going to yeah. talk about these blackberries. What am I going to do, talk about carburetors while you cook? No, I said, you're going to talk about the blackberries you picked, and you just... Blackberries, yeah. Yeah, remember I how did. many many bushels of uh, blackberries you picked? It wasn't that many. <laughs> no, it was a bunch. It was like a five gallon bucket. <laughs> it was a bunch. Are y'all ready now? Okay, we're working on it. 
That's what happens when you, uh, can we do some Dwight music? Because I know people are it's saying live he's TV. here and we want some Dwight music. So let's go to some Mr. Play LJ. that funky music. <laughs> okay, and you didn't say the other word. In 1943 that my daddy left here to go to World War II. My uncle Emmett, his brother, walked with him from Pumpkin Center all the way downtown to watch him get on that train over at the depot and leave here for war. Emmett said he was scared to death he'd never come back home. Emmett said it was raining that evening and he said he cried when Daddy left out on the train. And then later on after that, I wrote a little song about it. It's called Baby Blue. I'm looking down from a hilltop at the lights of my hometown. This place is all so different now And they closed the pool room down That old wooden bridge I fished from Is replaced with man-made stone The swimming pool and our old school Like you, they both are gone Thinking about the summer of 1969. Long ago and far away, when I thought you were mine. For better or worse, they are thin, so much has changed since then. My crazy heart spins round and round When I dream of way back when When the rock and roll were playing That old silver Chevrolet And a and was all we knew back then Big brown But it's all over now, baby blue. Now the river flows so gently from the mountains to the sea. And the track that took my dad to war in 1943 still stretches by like so many years before But like you, the train's on a different track It don't come here no more And the rock and roll would play That old silver Chevrolet And a and was all we knew back I got to do last Monday. You guess, surely don't mean it. Guess what I got to do last week, and I was so honored. And you I'm wouldn't even know him if trembling. I hadn't been there. I'm still trembling in my boots. I got to meet Ronnie, the wild driver, Cantrell, who is Ella J's legend forever. Mm -hmm. And we are just 
praying that he's going to come do this show I'm with us I'm trying one day. to talk him into it. Because I'm telling you, the driving technique, NASCAR could learn a lot from that Yeah, Ronnie man. Cantrell, he is the Van Halen of all hot rodders, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All them would race each other to see who raced him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and guess what when they raced him? They got beat. They got beat, too. They got beat. Yeah. They got beat. I love not it. just once, not just most of the time, <laughs> every single time. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Now, can you describe the day that you were with him, that you were a little boy? Which day? The day that you were about 16, they threw you in the back seat of that car. It was that T.C. Carringer and some of that bunch. Yep. I forgot who all else. They scared you to death, didn't they? Well, I'd ridden with him before, but yeah, it was they, they pulled it. I'd said some things like, I'm not getting back in there. You know, the truth yeah. is I was wanting to get back in there. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. So TC and Dewey Sellers and a bunch of them grabbed me. And old Ronnie pulled at 57 around in front of the station and the windows was rattling like that in the station. And the, somebody jerked the door open and they set me in the car and they shut the door and... Bam. It was on. <laughs> yeah. And? We took off out of the what used to be the 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 Enco station. Then it was the Exxon across from Kenny Warren's over there. We hit South Main Street, south of the square. There was a at the time it was a First State Bank of Gilmer County, I think it was called, right there. He grabbed second gear in front of that bank, and my seat broke. <laughs> the back of my seat let go. <laughs> Not making this up, okay? <laughs> So, of course, with all that horsepower, I went straight in to the back seat. So, I'm trying to climb. He had to let up, let up for the traffic light up there. So, during that time, I climbed back up into the front seat, and I was holding on under the dash of the 57, the big red dash. It was a black with red interior, 57 Ford. One of them's coming. Wow. Wow. And, uh, and it, I remember the sign right there over the glove pocket. It said, ride at own risk. <laughs> and you're going... True what? statement, and uh, uh, yeah, so we turned right up there at the traffic light, went down in front of the pool room, and Lord have mercy, <laughs> Lord, uh, he had to be there with me that day. Yeah, yeah. Holy mackerel, okay, yeah. yeah. We went through the Bud Garland curve over there, you may not believe this, 80 miles per hour. Yep. Okay, over at the lumber company. Then we went out to Carter K to about, to where the, the jail is right now. And we turn and come back. We hit Drunkard's Spring. Ronnie, I'm telling on you. <laughs> the statute of limitations <laughs> <Yes>. is out. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm telling on you. We hit Drunkard's Spring Curve out there, if you know where that is, just before you get to Turnip Town. And it had these things in it that do that back then. We was running 115 miles per hour. Okay, wow. lost traction. The car went sideways like that. Ronnie knew exactly what he was doing. I knew what we was fixing to do. <laughs> he he busted the thing to the to put the pedal to the metal, as they say. All the horsepower kicked in, and Lord, he had it. Okay. <laughs> It pulled that car, it yanked that car, it was starting to give, okay, it was letting go, lost traction. So when he hit the horsepower, it yanked it, surged it forward, regained traction, and we straightened up and went up through there, I don't know, 135? Oh my God. Because 57, you know, they register 120 and then it's got two more. Mm -hmm. So it's really 130 on a 57 Ford. It was past that. Yeah. So I'm about 135. We, hit, we, we went into the Owltown Bridge. He let off a little right there, not much. We hit it at about 120. It was unbelievable. Telling on you, Ronnie. <laughs> Telling on you. And you lived to tell I it. saw Elvis. <laughs> <clears throat> John Lennon, the whole bunch. <laughs> oh, okay, man. scared to death. But I want to tell you, he handled that like a pro. He knew exactly what he was doing the whole time. He had total control of that car. I certainly didn't think so at the time, but he did. Yeah. We came through yeah. it like a champ. Yeah. That boy could drive a car. Yeah. You know what? Better than all the others, okay? Yeah. yeah. 
and he never went to NASCAR. Mm -hmm. NASCAR well, doesn't have the kind of talent that that man had. I know it. NASCAR didn't ever until Dale Earnhardt came. And along. Ronnie, Ronnie was a little short guy, you know, mm -hmm. and he he wouldn't lean back in the seat like some drivers do. He was he was up on the edge of the seat. He's driving like this. That's how he drove. You know, he's leaned up toward the steering wheel, driving like that. He was in control. Knew what he was doing. Wow. Wow. Well, what, hope, what times? What dad blame times? We hope that in the very near future, he's going to be sitting right over here. And yeah, we I'm going to try to talk him into it. I'm you know what I think would be really, really cool? If we could get him, when you finish the Ford that they're working on now, if we could get him in there and video him driving your car crazy. <laughs> would you like that? I don't think I want him to drive it like he drove his. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> he probably don't want to anyway. He's, he's a lot older now, and we both are, but... Uh, yeah, I'd love to have a picture of old Ronnie in that car that or some, would be some so footage cool. or something. Yeah, yeah it yeah. looks exactly like the one he had. That would be cool. Now, the car club that's here in LJ, is it, they don't have shows during the winter or anything. They start back in the spring, right? So nobody's got their cars out this time of year. Don't you usually put them up for the winter? No, oh, yeah, we don't get them out in this stuff, no. Yeah. I mean, lately I've been having mine out some, but I got one more I got to tell about Ronnie. All right. We used to go out on the Carter K side out there to the Dawson County line. There was a stretch there where they drag race. And I'd go, I'd have to be there every time because I knew Ronnie real well. I knew what he was capable of and all this stuff, you know. You witnessed history. <sighs> yeah. And they'd race, and whoever, they, like, again, they'd race each other, to, and whoever beat everybody would run Ronnie Cantrell. And this guy was up there, I don't know, uh, I don't know what his name was, but he was, he was a big old fella, and he had a, he had a almost, I guess a, about a brand new Corvette, it had a 454 in it. And he beat everybody. And that car was, you know, tough, and he'd, he'd run good. So he run Ronnie Cantrell. Ronnie had his 57 Ford with the 351 Cleveland in it. That may not sound like much uh, up against a 454, but folks, you should have been there. <laughs> so he run him. White something was that guy's name. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember his name. But he he ran Ronnie in the in the Corvette, and Ronnie beat him. Well, he, he said uh, something wasn't fair about the run. He said, I want, I want to run again. Something, I forgot what it was, but something it wouldn't, he didn't like the way it went down. So he was upset. He too. lost. Yeah. He lost. Yeah. He said, uh, you did this or something happened, and uh, I don't know what. But so he, wanted, he wanted a rematch. So he pulled out there again and ran Ronnie again, and Ronnie beat him that, worse, that time worse than he did the time before. He should have took the first And beating. then the big guy, whoever he was, was fit to be tied. He was really upset. We won't go into all those details, but mm -hmm. it went okay. I mean, but he was he was upset. But isn't that funny? Dirty Harry showed up. <laughs> Ronnie beats all of them. Oh gosh, you know there aren't any days like that left. There's no way you can drive like that, y'all. Even drive. Ronnie the other day when we was Don't talking to him, like he said this. we couldn't do that no more. It's too much traffic. He yeah, said, you know. yeah, yeah. Traffic never seemed to bother him before. Yeah, we don't recommend y'all trying this stuff, though. Just <laughs> no, no. disclaimer. Don't, we don't, no, recommend uh, don't try that enough. at home. Don't Lord try no. this. But when we think about how many guys, can you name how everybody used to line up out at the Red Dot? Yeah. How did they, how'd they line up? Who had what cars? Oh, gosh. Jimmy Panky had a green metal flake, 57 Ford. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And uh, old, there's a guy around here named David Sutherland. I think he's still with us. I reckon he lives down on uh, Round Top. If you're watching, David, loved your car, loved your driving. <laughs> and uh, he had a Super B, uh -huh. as tough as pine knots. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know what all. Uh, those guys would, they'd pull out of the, it was a hard hat area at the Red Dot, I swear. Yeah. They'd pull in there and they'd pull out there and he'd bust it and leave rubber all the way out in front of Simon's and by Mr. P's. And... Uh, there's, there's, there's a bunch of good old guys back there. I remember one time there was a there was a little young guy. He wasn't any, nothing of any notoriety of any sort. He just, uh, but his daddy was rich or something. We thought back then. Mm -hmm. He bought his he's 16 or 17 years old. He bought him a brand new uh, 70 Chevelle Cal induction 454. That's right. a lot of power for a yeah. 16 year old. Mm -hmm. He bought him one and he's running around town here. And I forgot his name, but y'all might remember him. Somebody might. But he's running around. Come out the red dot one evening. That car, of course, would run, but you know, you can't drive like Ronnie Cantrell. Yeah. And uh, so the little guy pulled into the red dot and they was all burning out, so he thought he would too. Uh -oh. 
So he just pulled in there and he pulled out there on the road and kicked that dead blame Chevelle in. It went round and round like a fish out of the water and off of that bank into the Cox Creek. Oh no. Tore it all to pieces. He was crying. I would have too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Tore it all to pieces. What a funny oh. story. Don't we love to tell funny <laughs> stories? Yeah. Don't we love that you lived through it to yeah, tell it? Yeah. You know, that's, that's amazing. I was actually, uh, I just over there with my car. I didn't have horsepower or nothing, I was, but I didn't do that. But I always remember that. I can almost tell you his name, but I can't. But anyway, that happened. 70 Chevelles were kind of the year I quit liking Chevelles. I still like the 66s. I still I know. Like, I like a 66 way yeah, better. Yeah, the, the 70 just 66 my is my favorite Chevelle. A 67 is awful close, but they look like a Buick. Please don't beat me up. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I like 66. Yeah. And I like 70s, too. Now, speaking of 57 Fords, we got to tell you all to keep a praying for our buddy. Can you talk a little bit about your buddy that had the bad accident? Uh, and you went oh, to yeah, him. my yeah. childhood hero, Wilburn, yes. my buddy Wilburn. Yep. Yeah, now he's doing good, though. He's doing real good. I went up there the other day and saw him. He's, uh, he's, he's coming along pretty good, but uh, he's, got a, he's got a struggle ahead of him, I realize that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, keep him in your prayers. He's, uh, he, he was, he's got a car that'll honk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on the cover of Pumpkin Center. You may have <laughs> yeah. seen it. Yeah. A few times. <laughs> it's got a four four oh six yeah. uh big block Ford and it. it'll it'll carry the mail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And old Wilburn's a great guy too. I'm giving thanks to him on my, my reissue of Pumpkin Center that I'm doing. I'm taking out a bunch of that babbling in there. No need in having it, but I didn't take that part out where where I'm thanking Wilburn. He come out there and he sat with us. It was hot. Him and his car stayed with us all evening shooting. <laughs> Pictures. Shooting pictures, trying to get an album cover. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. Wilburn's yeah. dandy. Hope and, you feel better real soon, Wilburn. And and to Gail. Gail, yes. um, been praying for her because she is struggling, struggling, struggling. And, uh, you know, just the prayers that she requested when he was, they weren't sure he was going to make it. I know. It was, it was tough, and it was tough for a week or so. And uh, that first week was, was pretty rough. But yeah. But he's, he's making it. So, yeah, keep praying. And, uh and I'll tell you the the bad thing about it is it was um, it was one of those things it shouldn't have never happened. And if you're out there on the road, I, I saw something today where a family from Dalton, a couple was killed. They were in Texas, and um, some illegal immigrants had crossed the border. A whole vehicle, including their what do they call them when they're the coyote that gets them and brings them across the border and takes their money yeah. and puts them in a vehicle. The guy who was driving, all the pe I think there were like eight people total killed, he was running from the law and hit uh -uh. this couple from Dalton and killed them. Oh, me. And that's what you have to look out for. It's not your crazy driving, it's the crazy nuts on the road. I know. I got a safety tip for you. When you're going through intersections like me going home up there at, uh, at the New Hope store there where that intersection where Roberts Bad Ridge, intersection. horrible intersection, and there's plenty more just like it. So here's what you do, folks. Slow down. Mm -hmm. The person behind you will be, he'll be a little aggravated with you, but just go slow because they're going to pull out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll pull up there and they don't see you. Mm -hmm. I don't know, they're thinking about something else, they're playing with their phone, so go slow through those areas because if you do have to hit somebody, it'll hurt way less. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And where's that place where the guy got killed on the motorcycle? Right there. Right there. Yeah. That, I've pulled out there so many times and yeah. I'm always like looking in six directions and, mm -hmm. and worrying because people do go way too fast. I try to do that when I come through there. I slow down, slow down way down and, and maybe if somebody does something, you know, and too, if you're going too fast in a situation like that, they can pull up to the intersection and look and there's not anything coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're not there yet, but if you're going so fast, that they can't get pulled out and in the road and out of the way in time, then you're going to run into them. Slow down. Mm -hmm. Slow down in yep. those places. Yep. In particular. Slow down everywhere. Yeah. And, and Do I drive fast? No. No. No, I no. don't. No. I always no, trust think, me. You know, no. <laughs> no. If yeah. you was to need to slam into a tree to yeah. avoid no telling what, you'd rather be going to it'll hurt than way less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it goes on and on. If somebody's got their kids in the car and you yeah. have to hit them, yeah. That'll, you know, it'll be less severe yeah. if you're going. Speed is a killer. 
that wreck this morning, you literally could not identify the car that the couple from Dalton was in. I could not tell you what kind oh, of car gee. they were in. And the other people, I think there were six or eight in that vehicle that had just crossed the border illegally. And this was all in Texas. But it was a, a couple from Dalton that was out there visiting their family. And um, mm. husband and wife were killed because they were know. fleeing, crossing the border illegally, fleeing at a high rate of speed. And that's the key. The Keep it slow. Speed, Keep it slow. Yeah. You get in a vulnerable situation where somebody may pull out for whatever reason. I know you have the right of way, but just go slow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me the other day, I was looking at a motor up there, and somebody said something about at 6,000 RPMs, something starts. I said, listen, <laughs> this motor's <laughs> never seeing 6,000 RPMs. <laughs> We're going to cruise. We don't want to bruise. We want to cruise. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, we are. I ain't no Ronnie Cantrell, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're in so a world that we don't He know could drive like home. that, but I better not. <laughs> you better not. So much traffic, so many people, but get out today and enjoy these mountains. Go up Boardtown. Yesterday, Boardtown was stellar, beautiful. It was absolutely gorgeous. Remember where we took those pictures of candy in the front yeah, of the church? Yeah. The leaves yesterday okay. were unbelievable. Believe it or not, I went to uh, over the mountain yesterday to the village. The Fort leaves mountain. are still beautiful. Yeah, yeah Fort yeah. Mountain. I yeah. thought they'd all be gone. Mm -mm. Hadn't been over there in a day or three. But they're, the leaves are still very pretty up there. Mm -hmm. It's something about the top is colder, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it gets warmer as you go down, so yep. you get a little mixture. You get a variety Beautiful. Of, of everything. Get yeah. out today. Enjoy today. 30% chance of showers tomorrow. We don't know if the leaves will be gone once the rain comes. So take today, but take your life in your own hands and watch every single way when you're pulling out, when you're watching. Don't speed and try not to hit anybody and uh, get out there and enjoy life. Yeah, and enjoy Ronnie life. Cantrell, get on the show with us. Right. You're a legend. You're a legend. You need to do this. You're a legend. You make Dale Earnhardt look like <laughs> an amateur. <laughs> I on. remember all those uh, uh, Saturday evenings, I think it was, you'd come back from the races. Every single time he'd go off somewhere and race. And every Sunday, uh, what was it? I don't know what evening it was, but he'd come into the to the Exxon station, Inco at the time. He'd always have that trophy. Oh yeah, of course. Of Every course. time. I wonder what you did with all them. You still got them? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Bring them on here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we want to see you. Heck yeah. It was good to be with y'all, and and please keep uh, keep Jen's daughter Michelle in your prayers because again we're gonna have to say our goodbyes to her on Saturday, and um, there's so many people in our community struggling. There's a family in Pickens County struggling right now. There's so many people that have been hurt, have uh, lost a loved one, and uh, we can help them get through there with just a little bit of prayer. Thank you for being with us today. And don't forget, his music is going to be available very, very soon. All you have to do is chase me down and catch me in the Suburban, and you can get some of it. I'm thinking so about doing a box set. you think a box set would be a good idea? I don't know. I don't know if people can afford a box set. Well, they're, trying to buy, like a bargain. they're trying to buy a gallon of milk, right? I know. They that hot that. dog. Yeah, I forgot about the hot dog. Hot dog's $8 a piece. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we better not. All right, y'all. We'll see you again soon. Check out YouTube because all his music is available on YouTube. We've got Mountain Life is going on there now. It is a great, great way to check out the music of Mr. L.J. We'll see you again soon.